Hello, everybody. Um, I have some mail there. About uh, a quarter of this third cup. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to mix that with distilled water. And uh, we're going to stir it up. And what we're going to do is uh, Chuck and I are going to fill this other storage battery and form it into a crystal battery. And we're going to add Elm until we get the exact solution that we have to fill. And it has to be sort of... Then I'll go heat this in the oven and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, we've heated the water. And what you're looking for at the right mix is some slipperiness to it. So I'll we'll add a little bit more. it up. And that's just about right. There's, it, there's a little bit of slipperiness to it when you put your fingers in it. So I wanted to show you where I've determined this proportion to make this crystal battery. So, it's a little bit more. You don't want to overdo it, and you don't want to underdo it. You want the right exact amount in the battery if you want it to last. And this has been heated in the microwave, so... And do not use tap water. Under no circumstances use tap water. Okay, that's correct. And I'll be back. Okay, anyway, we're filling our battery here. We're using the syringe because uh, this is, you can't see through this battery, so we're going to just watch it till it gets to the top, and then we're going to be set to go, and then we'll start the charging process. Okay, so now all Chuck and I have done is put the alum in here and now we're going to test it for the dry charge and this is 12 volt bank and there you go so now we're going to form the battery and this is an alum battery maybe we should measure the voltage form here Chuck real quick remember we didn't do anything to this battery except put the alum in it we didn't put no charge So that's where it's sitting, 8.83, and we'll be back. Okay, Chuck and I are going to test the voltage one more time on it. And this is straight out. There is no lead, no lead acid, no sulfuric acid. Okay, so it's about 8, 8.4. Now we'll load it with that bank of LEDs. And that takes about 1.5 amps to drive. And you can see it's there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to hook it to the solar tracker here and form it. And the red light indicates um, that it's in the charge mode. The green will come on and indicate that it's charged. This is only a 5 amp hour battery, so this is going to be pretty quick with the tracker. So we're in the charge mode. And we'll see what we're pushing to it here. Okay, so see we're at 
14. Oh, no, it's not. Make a connection here. So see you're at 15. The tracker is indicating a green light, so it charged pretty quick. And with the real light steady on, it's just in the pulse mode of desulfation. And this is going to go backwards and forwards. Remember, this is a dry charge battery. So it's just going to hold it there. And if you put the current clamp on here, Chuck, you'll be able to tell them exactly what the current is on this battery right at this time. about four amps. Okay, what's coming in from the panel? So it's got it regulated to four <coughs> amps. It's about five amps coming in on the panel. So what's going to happen here is this is just going to hold it because it's in the green mode. So it's in a pulse mode now with the green and red lights on. It shows you that it's in the pulse mode of desulfation, so you can see what it's doing with the battery. Okay, and we'll be back when we have the charge in it. Okay, we can see where the tracker has got this battery. And again, the green is an indication that it's at 15 volts and the red flickering in here is an indication that it's in the pulse mode. So we turn it off. We can see where this battery is going to come down to. So this is about right for, for a lead acid battery. It would be one cell short of being 12 volts because it's going to going to try to do 1.2 volts per cell with a lot of current so we'll put it back on and let it let it charge and let it form and this is going to take about an hour or so to get the power out of the battery and then I'm going to run the load box with it at a 2 amp setting to see just what we get out of it so I'll be back with that Okay, it's been about uh, three quarters of an hour now, and I'm going to check the current probe on this. So you can see it's waving. It's down to about two amps, three amps right in there. It's going back and forth because you can see it pulsing the battery, and that puts it in a desulfation mode. We'll check the positive line here. Yep. And then the voltage. So now if we just turn the tracker off and see where the voltage falls on this battery. You can see, so it's so, so it's forming pretty good, and uh, you can't see down in there, but you, but it is bubbling. And so we just let it go ahead until this uh, red light on the tracker gets very very dim to where you can't see it, and the uh, blue light indicates that it's tracking the sun in its uh, peak range. Green light indicates that the battery is floating at 1511, and the red light indicates that uh, it's desulfating it with a pulse. 
so I'll be back when we can load this. I keep saying that, but uh, I want to give it the right amount of time. Be back. Okay, it's been a couple of hours, and uh, I'm showing you where this battery is settling down. You can see it on the graph here, and I've got it hooked up to the load box, so I'm going to turn the load box on. And then I'm going to load it at the 2 amp level. Right here. Just to see what I get out of it right now because I haven't formed it that long. So I want to find out. Well, it's not going to let me load it there. So what I'm going to have to do is load it with a resistor. And I'll be right back. Alright, as I said. I've got it hooked up with a resistor, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and load this. So I'm going to turn the solar tracker off right here, and I'm going to let the battery fall to where it's going to go. And actually, I'm going to start loading it right now. And uh, you can see it's falling down. Uh, remember, I'm only interested in running the oscillator circuits and small lighting. So anyway, it's under load right now. And that's what the meter's showing. So let's see where we can, what we got in the battery. So I'll be back here. It should find a plateau and stay there. expand this out. Okay, so you can see it here. Uh, it fell down. Remember, it's just alum solution and lead plate, so I don't expect a real lot, but I do expect some current out of it. Because so I haven't given it much time to charge here, but you can watch the curve here. And I'll be back. I just wanted to expand it out so you can see how it drops down. But I'm going to be running oscillator circuits for garden light, so they're going to be in the 30 milliamp range. And this is a lot more than that. This is at least one amp here. And I'm just forming a crystal battery out of this, so the impedance is totally different than on a lead-acid battery. So I'll be back. Okay, so what I'm asking here for is 1.2 amps, and that's these two 4-ohm resistors for 8 ohms. And this is the voltage. This is a normal operating voltage for this type cell because of the impedance but you can see that it's it's giving me the 1.2 amps. We'll just see how far this goes out. Now the more I do this, the stronger this cell is going to get. Because remember, I'm taking the charge now and then I'm going to be charging it back up with the tracker. So as a quick indication during the sunlight hours I would be using a 1.1 amp solar panel with this with uh, auto sense sun control so that when the sun goes down at night the LED lighting comes on so I'll be back Okay, um, this you now has been about 20 minutes, and you can see it's settled in here, 7.70 volts. Of course, all your digital circuits run on 5 volts, so it's going to run them just fine. And uh, you can see the curve. It's almost identical to a NICAD battery. Remember, there's no acid in this battery. And I'm loading it, and these are pretty warm. You can't touch them. So 
resistance 1.2 amperes and now you can see I'm going to take this all the way to zero and uh, what I'm going to be using next after the charge will be this light and I told lid motor that it's called gold zero it's 200 it's, it's a 12 volt light and it's a 3 watt and so I'll be hooking this up and then we'll run the same chart again and I'll be back okay it's been a while longer now and you can see that this is your curve and this battery really is quite stable considering that it does not have any sulfuric acid at all in there it came dry so the only thing in there is alum and it's when you touch the alum it's just sticky it's a little bit sticky to your touch a little slimy I would say and uh, of course it looks like this so what I think I'm going to do is I really want to take this to zero but it's going to take a while um, considering that I'm just talking about garden lights and I'm going to be running this 3 watt light off it as soon as I recharge it and then we'll watch the chart again under the LED load and I'll be back. What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to short this battery right here and there we go I just want to short it out. And that's through the clip leads. That's the voltage through the clip leads under a short. And you can see that it did short because it's right here. So I'm going to leave it shorted until I get that down to about. Okay, I'm back after 10 minutes. and. I've left this shorted and you can see there's nothing there. So now I'm going to unshort it and we'll watch it recover. And of course you'll see a spike here. And I'm just going to let it recover a little bit and then I'm going to turn the solar tracker on and charge it. And then we're going to discharge it under this load with this LED, this 12 volt LED light which is a camping light and by the way lid motor these are uh, I'm directing this towards you this is what you'd want on your sailboat because they're salt water proof every connector on it's sealed with o-rings and they can really take some abuse and they're 3 watts and they're really bright and you'll see that in a minute yeah, and that's what it, the name of the light is. And this is a screw out bulb with all the LEDs. So I'll be back. But anyway, there's your recovery. And now we'll turn the solar tractor on. And of course, right away, it's going to do this going to raise it to 15 and then it's going to come down because it's going to go up on its charge curve so the impedance is changing right now and you can see that here now I'll be back now well, one more thing that I'm going to point out if you look very closely right now the impedance has changed and the green light went off so now it's under full charge mode. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so once again I'm going to point out to you this is where we took the battery under resistive load down to about 4, 4.8 volts and then we dead shorted it out for this time length and then we let the battery recover here and now it's under solar charge so you can see the way it's charging. You can see that it's at 1508. Green light's on, but the red light's solid, which means it's still taking a bit of current. 
in pulse mode. So, I just want you to see that. And of course, it's only a little 5 amp hour battery, so there's not much here at all. And the cells that you're making, uh, by making your own lead plates and everything, are nowhere even equivalent to this type of battery with the series cells. This can get some real current when the process is done. So I'll be back. Okay, now what I'm showing you is I bypassed the solar charger. The regulation from the Tesla charger. And I'm allowing the full voltage of the panel. And there it is, 17.73. So I'm really hitting this battery hard because during this test I'm hitting this with everything that I can abusive wise and so I want to see this gap here is where I disconnected okay I've disconnected the meter and so the meter fell right down to zero and that's but this chart actually continues straight through here and then this is where I am totally abusing the input power to the battery. I'm going to point all this stuff out to you so that there's no way that anybody can say you didn't perform the test. So I'll be back. Okay, and one other thing here is I've decided to regulate it again. And uh, so I don't want to overheat this little 5 amp hour battery. It's boiling pretty good. Um, if you're going to do this with an automobile storage battery, what I suggest you do is you just buy the cheapest automobile storage battery off the shelf. Have them check it before you purchase it. Or a garden battery like that. A couple of those will be fine. And you dump the acid out and flush it out with distilled water. Do not use tap water because you do not want any other minerals in this battery. And after you rinse that battery out, you leave it upside down for a couple of days to dry out. And then you fill the alum mixture. But make sure that the battery is charged before you dump it out. You want it at full potential before you dump it out because you want the lead to move so that the red lead is there. Because if you lose the potential between these plates, then it takes a very long time to get this battery to go back and forth before you can build up the red lead again. So what I'm going to do is give it about a half hour more and I'll be back. And then I'm going to run this light. But this is the one lid motor. This is the one you want for your sailboat. <laughs> Anybody wants it for your living room or anything. And uh, you would uh, on these Elm batteries, you'd only be using a one amp panel, which I'll show you in a few minutes when I come back. Okay, so it's been about a couple hours here. And I'm going to disconnect it from the Tesla charger. And we're going to watch where the voltage goes. But and then I'm going to hook up this 3-watt uh, LED light. turn it on and that's how bright it is and we're going to watch where it goes this is only three watts so it's, it's pretty bright too. and so we'll see where this chart goes so we'll give it a few minutes and watch now one other thing I wanted to point out while I'm running this light is it's going to pick a plateau and stay there. And so 
it looks like these don't draw anything at all. They're three watts. And I'll turn it off and show you. And it's they sold them at Costco at one time, and they were only like 24 bucks or 30, somewhere around there, 24, 25 bucks. And uh, then they didn't sell them anymore. But you can find them on the internet. You just add ten dollars to that when you get them on the internet. So it looks like it's going to sit around there. I'm going to turn on the light again, and we'll let it go for a while. And I'll be back as soon. I'll give it about twenty minutes, and I'll be back. Okay. Remember what I said to everybody. It's at 10.56 now, and that's in the 1.7 volt range. So you're not even at 1.2 volts yet per cell, and that's what I'm looking for. The same as a NICAD battery. And you can see our light is still there. So it's under load. And now we'll just watch it here and I'll finish up the movie. Okay, we're at 10.14 volts right now. And uh, uh, it's been running this load the whole time. So 10.14 divided by 6 cells is we're at 1.69 volts about per cell in this battery and that's what I would suspect in an alum conversion on a battery that's why I'm saying you take a big automobile battery and dump it out and wash it out get all the sulfuric acid out of it charge it first make sure the plates are good and formed and then add the alum solution to it and you'll have a wonderful battery that can run all the LED lighting that you want and you'll only need a panel this size which is a one amp panel max and you can get these in the Harbor Harbor Freight panel at about a half a amp to one amp somewhere for around I, I thought I saw them for about 45 to about $55 so with that and this and remember this is just a 5 amp hour battery but uh, you would want something like a battery that's 900 cold cranking amps and you only need this 1 amp panel to charge it because the Allen battery charges uh, just like a NICAD and it's pretty quick about how this charges because if I put the solar tracker back on right now and it's not in the sunlight we can watch it raise up but you can see where the battery is going to be and that's what I would expect it to do because the Allen battery is a little bit different than the lead acid cell and as long as it keeps giving you this current then that's the kind of light you have and that's pretty bright for a 3 watt light and these are uh, capable of being all strung together and they come with a cigarette lighter plug and these are all watertight fittings so people have been using them and uh, using these on sailboats for a while now with a little bitty panel and a little lead acid battery with a little inverter in it and uh, you can see if you go to uh, goal zero on their internet site you can see what exactly what these lights are all right and uh, I don't know I think it's pretty good I bought a bunch of these and I use them out on the patio with an arrangement like this that we're doing right now but you can see what the discharge curve is when you load the battery correct so it's going to be just like a NICAD battery but anyway I'm glad that uh, I could share this with you guys on how to do this. 
and then uh, good luck. And there's your answer, lid motor and dad have on the way that the charts run and what you can do with it. You can actually take this battery right to zero and it'll totally recover without harm and come right back and follow that chart. Alright, have a good day.